Hello Facebook! Hi! I'm Marco True. I'm the food editor here at Sunset Magazine in Oakland, California. And with me is Irvin Lynn. Hi! He is <laughs> the author of this beautiful book, Marbled, Swirled, and Layered, which was named one of the best baking books of 2016 by the New York Times. Yay! No less. Yay. Thank you, New York Times. <laughs> And he has a wonderful blog called Eat the Love, and he's going to talk a little bit more about it later. But today he's going to show us one of the recipes from the book, which are these amazing brownies topped with Cracker Jack. Yes. Yes. And I know it's football season. You know, the Super Bowl is this Sunday. But these are just as good for Super Bowl as they would be for baseball. So we're going to just dive into how to make these. So, Urban. Take us, take us through it. All right. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven uh, to 325, Done. but then also prep your pan right here. So the pan, uh, you're going to spray it with some cooking spray first. Now, why do you prefer cooking spray to butter? Um, it's easier and faster. Okay. I'm inherently a lazy person, so whatever whatever shortcuts I can do or whatever things I can do that are um, easier, mm -hmm. that's why that's why I pick it. But, and the other thing about this is you're not necessarily going to be tasting this because I'm actually going to be lighting this with parchment paper. Okay. So I'm, the um, spray itself is really there just to help the parchment paper stick to the pan itself. Ah, and gosh. what I do with this, this is a little trick that I do, I line it this way and then I cut off this part right here. Yeah, so the widthwise rather than lengthwise. Yes. That way you're not getting these weird crinkly corners. Good point. And then I will cut this again in half, like this. And then cut this about the length of that. Ah, uh, okay. So now I've got these two pieces, mm -hmm. and you can line your pan this way as well. Ah, so you don't have to be absolutely perfect about complete no, coverage. No, just not complete coverage. This is just sort of like to make it, it easier for you to remove the brownie once you're done. Okay. So that's what we're going to start off with. And now I've got this really nice lined pan. Okay, excellent. Put this over here. Awesome. That's as well. All right. And the next step, we're going to take the dry ingredients that we have. So we've got flour, I've got Dutch processed cocoa, I have baking powder, and I have a little bit of salt. So we're just going to add that all into a bowl. Yeah, and, and Dutch processed cocoa is such an interesting product. It's a little bit more yeah. alkaline and it is. Yeah, and uh, just gives you different properties from regular, say, drinking cocoa. Yes. Or natural cocoa, which is what you oftentimes find. And right. you can get like it sometimes it's a little bit hard to find Dutch processed cocoa, but I have used um, Hershey's special dark chocolate ah, cocoa. Yes. And that is actually a super easy cocoa to find at most grocery stores. And it is actually a blend of Dutch that. process and natural process, but it uh -huh. works like um, Dutch process. Uh, so okay. that one totally works with all the recipes in my book. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So from this, the dry ingredients, I'm going to take the balloon whisk and I'm just going to like stir it up real fast like this to blend all together. So you just want to basically stir it until you get a uniform color. You know, I love that you are not calling for sifting. It's so much, again, lazy. <laughs> it's all about the shortcuts. I am a sifter. I am a sifter. Yeah, lady. but you know, this this is so much easier. And then I am going to be using the whisk for other things. A so whisker, I mean. Yeah, a whisker. A yeah. whisker. Yeah, and then I actually, you know, less things to wash as well. So. Absolutely. So once I've done that, I'm going to take the butter right here. Mm -hmm. That's about a stick and a half. Or stick, so? and a, a stick and a half of butter. Okay. And then six ounces of unsweetened chocolate. Okay. I'm going to put that right there as well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually going to put this in the microwave. All right. And I'm going to microwave it for 45 seconds. Okay. Now, can you let it just go for the entire 45 no. seconds? No. So what you, I suggest doing is do it for 45 seconds and then um, stir it and then do it for another 30 seconds and continue doing that until it actually is completely melted. Until it's melted. And it should only take you a couple of cycles. It shouldn't actually take you that long. So maybe three cycles or so. Okay. Um, if you just leave it in to sit, what will happen is parts of it will melt and parts of it will stay solid. And then you'll actually start burning the chocolate before all of it melts. Oh, not good. Yeah. Yeah, because I know I love to microwave chocolate myself. I think it's yes. so much faster, but a lot of people are scared to veer away from the traditional double boiler. And you can do that too. If that's yeah. what you're comfortable with, you can totally steer it. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. you can simply use a double boiler as well. Uh -huh. What's nice about this though is um, because I'm melting it with the butter itself, you actually can, instead of double boiling it, you can just put it directly in the heat. Okay. Um, and melt it that way. And normally I wouldn't recommend doing that because the direct heat would scorch the chocolate. Right. But because you have the kind of, um, you have this chocolate, the butter to sort of buffer it a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Butter the buffer. Yes. Yes, that's nice. Fat does sort of insulate everything from harm. It does. Harm. Yeah. No, it's People great. Included. And who doesn't love butter? <laughs> who doesn't? All right, that's excellent. Well, and you know, um, Urban, when, right before we went on air, you were telling me a little bit about your early life as an art director. Uh, yes, yeah. in a former life, I was an art director. I've had many lives. Yeah, yes. that's fascinating. And uh, I would imagine that that sort of aesthetic sensibility kind of flows into the photography that you do for your Absolutely. Blog. When I worked at a, um, when I worked in my design shop, I mean, definitely went to photo shoots a lot. I, oh. I worked in um, various different design shops. Some of them were nonprofit, and the most recent day job, which I quit about six, seven years ago, but my last day, day job was um, working for restaurants mostly, or most of my clients, restaurant and retail. Okay. So I did a lot of stuff for chain restaurants, for major restaurants across the nation, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of menu board systems actually as well as doing, and packaging. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, one more, I think. One more? Yeah. Almost sure. there, but one more plate. There. And then you sort of had an I had, an a bit of a, I had a bit of an epiphany working for them. Um, I was designing packaging for a very uh, for one of the top five burger chains in the nation, and I had this epiphany that I was actually designing trash. I was designing the packaging uh, that wrapped around the burger and the cups and the fry holders, and that's all stuff that got thrown away after you used it, and it just seemed very heartbreaking for me <laughs> to be designing yeah. garbage. So. <laughs> It's a good point. Yes. So now you're designing things that are beautiful and delicious and, and bring long-lasting delight. I, right? That is the hope. That's <laughs> that's the hope. That's the dream. Yes. Well, so. I, I can tell you by looking through this book, it's just, it seems filled with that sort of thing. So Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this is pretty much melted, you can see right there. Yeah. Um, oh, that looks lovely. Yeah. And you want to always stir it after you've microwaved it because there's always going to be residual heat from uh, okay. the bowl itself and also from, you know, the different pockets. Because the way the microwave cooks, it kind of cooks unevenly. Right, so, right. So that's why you always want to stir it in between. Okay. So at this point, it's pretty good. I'm going to just wipe this off and use this whisk. Hmm. And with the whisk, I'm going to just add Ooh, oh, you can do that. Oh, you yeah. a little bit of shell. A little bit of shell. Still impressive. <laughs> she could do it with one hand. With one hand, yes. I have still not mastered that. Oh, yeah. I have tried. It's, it's fun. I it's, just end up cracking the whole thing in yes. my fist like a toddler. <laughs> I feel ridiculous. Um, I'll show you the little trick of how I do it then. Okay. Like, yes. No, Ryan Scott tried to teach me how. Oh, really? About a month ago. And yes, it was not I, successful. I failed. Okay. So, I failed on Facebook Live. Oh, great. Failed. So the trick is one, you want to uh, tap it on the surface uh -huh. like this. And then you just kind of want to use uh, your two fingers and spread it apart. Like you first use your indention of your okay. thumb, uh -huh. like that, Okay. and then just sort of, and now of course it's not working for me either, <laughs> but you want to like just break it apart like that. Oh. See, and this one just, yeah, and I got shell in here again. Okay. This is what happens. Well, so. Yeah, a little bit of shell. A little bit of shell. Well, like my mother always says, who's going to notice a little <laughs> bit of shell? <laughs> my mother's so. a very confident woman. You know, and you know what? You're topping it with crunchy caramelly stuff. So it's a little crunchy already. Right. <laughs> that was gonna be up the Yeah, we try not to do that. <laughs> try not. To. So right. again, and we'll do it two hands this time. Okay. A little bit easier. So. so now, is the egg actually cooking in there because it's hot, or? Um, well, the, one of the reasons that we do it like. Um, we end up doing it one at a time as we're hoping that the egg will actually start to cool off uh -huh. the, the chocolate itself. I see. Yeah. Yes. And keep it from seizing up as it seems. Yeah, it seems to be like seizing up just a little bit. So that's probably because it was a little warm, we probably should have waited okay, for so it to, it yeah, cool so you can let it cool a little bit. Uh -huh. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, because this is seizing up a little bit. That's not necessarily what it's supposed to look like. Uh -huh. But it'll come together once we 
But you add all the dry yes. stuff. Actually, you know what I realized? Mm -hmm. Is we were supposed to add the sugar first. Oh. And that's why, that's what will cool it off. Okay. So that is what happened. Got it. So we should have done that first, and I apologize for that. Yeah. So let's add the sugar now. Okay. This is not how it normally is done. I'm sure it's all going to taste great. Well, in the end. it'll work out in the end. <laughs> yes, it'll work out. Excellent. Good. So, for you. yeah, so that's what we're supposed to have done. We're going to add the sugar first. And Dude. once the, the sugar is added, then we add the eggs. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why it was seizing up. But you can see as you put the sugar in here, it's starting to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, it's so, all coming together. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if the texture has any difference. You know? Yeah, once it actually gets baked when up. It actually gets baked. That's that's looking. That looks quite much. Normal. Yeah, that looks much better for a batter. Yeah. For a brownie batter. Terrific. Now, were you a child who liked to bake? I was actually. Mm -hmm. So when I, my mom always wanted me out of the house in the summertime. Oh. And one of the reasons that I learned how to start cooking and baking was my mom made me take a summer class on cooking oh. between third and fourth grade. And I had this amazing epiphany um, or this experience that was like life changing where I made snickerdoodles. Oh. And I never, growing up, I was, I'm Asian, I, I'm a, a child of immigrants. My parents um, were from Taiwan and mm -hmm. I never ever, I, I had never had a snickerdoodle before. I never, we rarely had desserts or cookies or anything in the house. Oh. So, That's why you're so um, healthy and strong today. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that is, um, and so I had the snickerdoodle, it was like, you're playing with Play-Doh and you put it in oh. sugar and you stick it in the oven, like magic, yeah. you have cookies that come out. And it smells um, good. And it smells amazing and it's, yeah, it was like this revelation to me. Wow. And after that, I just started baking and I baked all the time. Um, in fact, I always baked when I was, um, I had major things to do in high, in high school and college. Ah, procrastinating so, through baking. Yes, actually yes. I called it procrastinating baking is what I called it. So, and I even talk about that in the book. I'm all like, I'm procrastinating, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And my roommates would come home from college and they'd see me baking up brownies and they'd be like, oh, you got a test tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, totally have a test tomorrow. We love it when you have tests tests. Like, <laughs> yep, basically. All right, so that looks much more normal now. Oh, that's so what's supposed save to the day. Yes. And we're going to add that vanilla. Vanilla. Okay. Straight in. For you. All right. And yeah, this is looking beautiful. Yeah, that looks much more normal. Okay. All right. So that's done. So you've got that. And then um, why do you use, you've used the unsweetened chocolate, and you're going to use bittersweet chocolate yes. next. And, and why these two chocolates? What are you aiming for there? So uh, I really like to use unbitter, unsweetened chocolate with brownies because I, that way I can control how sweet it is. Sometimes right. I want my brownie to be a little sweeter. Sometimes mm -hmm. I want it to be a little less sweet. Um, and then, But I also want it to be super chocolatey. And if I add chunks of chocolate, which I'll be doing, uh -huh. um, that will allow it, when you bite into it, you get a little bit of gooey chocolate. We all want so, that. Yes, yes, yes. So at this point, you add the dry ingredients that we've already whisked. Mm. And nice. I'm going to go ahead and fold that in. So yeah, that's why I use, I think in the cookbook, actually, I call it a double chocolate brownie. Yes, you do. Yeah. And it is part of why I picked it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do love chocolate. Now, it's not a whole lot of dry matter, actually. It's not. It's sense. a very, it's a very moist, very, like, yeah. very dense chocolate. So there is not a lot of dry matter. Wonderful. It's actually more like triple chocolate because you have your uh, I guess that's cocoa true. and you have your two chocolates. chocolates. And, that is true. Yeah. Mm, extremely wonderful looking. Now, on your blog too, uh, just so tell people a little bit more about Eat the Love, it's not a baking blog per se. No, it started out as a baking blog. So initially, okay. I, you know, I love to bake as I mentioned before. And a lot of the baking was, for me, baking is really about sharing food. So right. you inherently, when you make brownies, you very rarely would make this just for yourself. I mean, oh. some people would. Oh, I, 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 I beg to differ. <laughs> you know. But like dessert, you know, as I, I you know, dessert is oftentimes optional. Uh -huh. um, not always for, for uh -huh. some people, but uh, cooking for me was, you know, and I love to cook. I love to cook for other people as well. But cooking for me is um, a necessity. So baking was something that was pure pleasure, and that's what I kind of loved about it. Yes. So I started out my blog as a baking blog, and then I ended up um, writing this cookbook. And when I got this cookbook deal, I decided I could not develop recipes for the book and also for the blog. So I switched over and did a lot of savory stuff. And now okay. I kind of do a blend of both. 
And are you doing a lot of uh, Taiwanese sorts of things? On you know, the I, don't do lot, I don't do a lot. I don't do a lot. I occasionally do some stuff that's uh -huh. inspired by my parents. I think I have a recipe coming up fairly soon that uh -huh. is Taiwanese inspired. But most of it, so you know, I grew up in the St. Louis in the right, Midwest. Right, right, right. So a lot of my comfort food is like comfort food. Sure. Yeah. So at this point, we're going to just add the semi-sweet chocolate here. Okay. And just fold that in, and we do this right after we've blended in the dry ingredients. So mm -hmm. There's no like dry pockets. And okay. then we're pretty much done. There you go. Just fold that in, and then we're going to add that into this bowl, right. or into this pan. Oh, a chocolate waterfall. <laughs> oh my god. Really, I, am I wrong to think it would be fun to bathe in something like that? <laughs> Is that so wrong? I would love that. I, you know, that... In my head, it's like the moisture of the butter would just feel great. And the sugar, in the, you know, yes. I don't know. There's something about it. That would be very decadent. It would be extremely decadent. Yes. Also very expensive. Also very expensive. Mm -hmm. Though I once took a, for a photo shoot, I took a milk bath. And that was... Really? Um, yeah, very fancy. My skin was so soft. Molly? Yes. For like days afterwards. I also Whoa. smelled a little bit like milk. <laughs> or like baby formula is what I smelled like. It was funny. Oh, that's it was pretty not so funny. Good. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. I was like, why does urban smell like baby babies formula? Would stop, babies yeah. would stop you on the street and point at you and wail. <laughs> so we're just gonna spread the batter out all the way to the edges here. Alright. It doesn't do that on its own. It's it really pretty thick, you can see. It's pretty yeah. thick. Wow, it's so, like lava. Yeah. So then okay. We are right. going to bake that. Okay, I'm going to pop it in the oven for you. Awesome. And Swipe up here a little bit. Something miraculous is about to occur because here it is, baked. The magic of Facebook Live. The magic <laughs> of Facebook Live. We are skipping. Skipping ahead. Now. Yes. So the next step after this is we're going to make popcorn. All right. So with popcorn, now you can make the popcorn if you want to cheat, which I also, as I mentioned, I'm lazy, so I've done this in the past. You can use microwave popcorn, but I actually like to make popcorn on the stove top, and I actually think it tastes better. It just so, tastes better. Yeah, I think it just tastes better. Well, it doesn't have any of those artificial ingredients that yeah. sometimes you get in, you know. It's true. Store-bought popcorn. Um, so we're going to do a tablespoon of olive oil, okay. and then I'm just going to throw in like three kernels. Oh, you're using fancy popcorn. I am. You don't have to use fancy popcorn, but that's what I have. Now, do all these little multi-colors mean it's going to taste different from just plain yellow? Um, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. They do taste ever so slightly different. Really? But uh, but it's very, very subtle. Okay. It's very subtle. And when you taste it, it'll taste like popcorn, but I feel like it tastes a little bit more intense. Okay. It's a little bit more, like, have you had rainbow-colored carrots before? Yes, I have. And you know how they taste more carroty? Yes, then they that, do. the orange carrots. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how this is. It tastes more popcorny. More popcorny. Yeah. Okay, like popcorn to the second power. Yeah, like an, yeah, intensified. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a more popcorny. Is that a word? I'm going to use that as a word now. I think you it do. is. So you throw three kernels in there, uh -huh. and you wait till they actually start to pop. Right. And you want to like shake this a little bit so that they move around there. Okay. And what I do is I usually throw in three kernels, let them wait till they pop, and that means that the entire thing is heated up, all the oil in there. Okay. And then I throw the rest of them in there. Let those heat up to thirty to about thirty seconds or so, right. and then I turn on the oven or turn on the stove again, and to oh. like a medium heat. Okay. And that way, they all they all have the same temperature, and they all start popping kind of at the same time. And then oh. you don't you have less kernels, like unpopped yes. kernels. I always get the burnt layer on the bottom. Yeah. Well, the other thing I always do is I always kind of shape this a little bit okay. so it doesn't quite burn. Yeah, and a nice so heavy pot. And too. a nice heavy pot really helps. Okay. Yeah. Well, and also in the interest of, you know, time and the magic yes. of Facebook Live, you have prepared a batch I of time ahead. Yes. So. so let's move to that. Brilliant. Now, I'll move these over. And we have popcorn. Okay. And if you want, you can see here, the popcorn actually has different colors, too. So oh, it's yeah. more white and more yellow. You can taste that if you want and see what you think. Oh, it is good. Does it taste more popcorn? -y? It does taste more popcorn. Is that kind of like, yeah. Thank you for bringing the nice popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Very nice. Okay. So we are going to. So now we're going to do caramel. Now we're going to make caramel. Yeah. So once you have the popcorn made, 
-hmm. And also to make a cracker jacket, we're gonna also sprinkle in peanuts. The peanuts. Peanuts. I love peanuts. Now, if you were, you know, if you really wanted nuts that had a peanut allergy, would what would you put in here? Chopped almonds? If you wanted. You could do in? chopped almonds. Uh -huh. You could do. You could go fancy and do pistachios. Mm -hmm. Or you could do hazelnuts to give it kind of hazelnuts. like a tall, uh, kind or of macadamia. Nut. Or macadamia nuts to give it kind of like that tropicalish. That would be amazing. That would actually. be really good. And if you did tropical, if you did macadamia nuts, I would actually try cooking it with um, coconut oil instead of uh, oh, olive oil yes. to give a slight tinge of coconut flavor to uh -huh. the popcorn. That would be really. That would be really good. Wow. Okay. You could even put like coconut in the brownies if you wanted, you know. You could. You, you could. could. Totally do or you could do flakes of coconut in there as well if you want oh. to add a little bit. If you really want to go tropical. Wow. That, that That'd be coming. great. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, uh, variation. so many variations. Um, and in my cookbook, there's actually two or three different variations as well. I have a peppermint version, and right. I don't remember what my other version is. Uh, Maybe like a mocha version or something. I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. Yes. But you know, you can see that if you get the template, then you can customize. Yes. So um, we're gonna pour in sugar mm -hmm. to make the caramel. I think it's a cup of sugar. I think you're right. And then I'm also gonna pour in. Um, is it two tablespoons? Two tablespoons. Two of tablespoons of light corn syrup. Light corn syrup, and yeah. the corn syrup is there to keep the, the um, to keep the sugar from seizing as you mm -hmm. heat it up. Yeah, caramel can be tricky, and corn syrup. You know, there's all this bad publicity around corn syrup. Sometimes corn syrup can be your friend. Yeah. I'm just not going to chug it out of the bottle. You know, don't do that. Don't but use it, too much. Yeah, don't yeah. don't use too much. But it can really help with yeah. things like textures. And what's interesting so, about I think people. Um, equate corn syrup with high fructose corn syrup, which is yes. very different than that this, is true. this type of corn syrup that we're using. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do that kind of on a medium high temperature. Okay, that's a very good point because people hear the word corn syrup and, and start to worry. Yes, they're like, oh, corn syrup. Mm -hmm. um, but you certainly, you know, if you are that averse to corn syrup, you can skip it, just be more careful about making your, your caramel because mm -hmm. it does, it will have a ha habit of crystallizing Right. A little bit, so you just have to be a little bit more patient about that. Yeah. So I'm going to crank this up. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you tell me a little bit more, I'm thinking still about popcorn, and yeah. um, you in your book explain how you can microwave popcorn, like yeah. DIY microwave yes. popcorn. Yes, so instead of actually doing what I did in um, the stovetop, uh -huh. I'm doing a tablespoon of, um, of oil and then the kernels, you can actually toss the kernels in the olive oil, stick it in an actual paper bag, uh, a brown paper bag, and just stick it in the microwave. Just any old paper bag. Um, I, I find like the lunch school, the old school, like brown paper bags work, oh, yeah. but you can do whatever you have around. Um, make sure it's paper. Right. Um, and you can, and it'll totally microwave. Just wow. like regular, popper, regular microwave popcorn. You just popcorn. did the exact same thing. Yeah, like in 90 seconds or however long yeah. you would actually put two minutes, however long you put for pop, microwave popcorn. Right, right. Do the same thing. And just wait for it to hear the pop. Mm -hmm. And when it stops popping after, I don't know, like if you see yeah. it here, it pops at like two, three second intervals, mm -hmm. that's when you stop it. Just like the printed instructions on the back of the bag, yes. in other words. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And nowadays, I think even most microwaves actually have little like instruct, like little buttons, like the they popcorn do. button, the popcorn you know? button. So. The beverage button. Yes, exactly. All the things we need. Yeah, and oh, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about, which had to do with chocolate. And you did not use chocolate chips. You were very careful to use bar chocolate. Yes. As opposed to chocolate chips. Now, what is the difference there? So chocolate chips are designed to actually hold their shape when they're heated up. Okay. And I like that sort of gooeyness that you get and when you have chopped chocolate. And I also kind of like the irregularity of chopped chocolate. So I always, whenever I have an opportunity to do chopped chocolate versus chocolate chips, I almost always opt for the chocolate chocolate. Interesting. And by the same token, if you were to make chocolate chip cookies and you ran out of chocolate chips and thought, oh, well, I can just chop up some chocolate from a bar and put it in there, you get sort of big oozy pieces. Yes, which is the best. Know. I love the big oozy pieces. Huh. Um, and to be honest, that, I almost never use chocolate chips anymore. I use really? chopped chocolate. And what I do is, because, you know, I am, as I have mentioned, three times maybe that I'm lazy. I, I will actually, this is something that I'm not super lazy about. I will actually um, chop like, you know, 
three pounds of chocolate all at once and put yeah, it in the yeah. bag. And then I used to have it. I could just reach for it like chocolate chips. Yeah. So we have this giant bag of chocolate chips. My mm. kind of it kind of aches. My hands kind of get for Yeah, that's that. a lot of chocolate. It's a lot of chocolate, but I also feel like then I'm good for like the year or whatever. Uh -huh. You know, I'm good to go. Then you're all set. And speaking of chocolate, um, I wanted to show you guys if you still have yeah. know, which go. chocolate we used. This is from a company called Guitard, uh, just south of San Francisco. And they're a wonderful old San Francisco company. They're going to be celebrating their 150th anniversary next year. And they make exceptional chocolate. They are really following artisan practices. And they take great pains to make sure that all the people who are harvesting for them are treated fairly, get a fair wage. Their production values are very high, and the chocolate's delicious. Um, and they do a lot of sort of single harvest chocolates now, too. They're increasingly focusing on fine, fine chocolate. So I think what's also great about them is they're also very easy to to get. I mean, yes, a lot you of can. a lot of like grocery stores carry it they across do. the nation, and um, they're not overly expensive. They're not no. like outrageously expensive. They're wonderful. Yeah. And I believe you can call them and ask for a factory tour, I think. Really? Yes. I never got that. You have to call in advance and make an appointment. But um, I walked into their factory by mistake once because I was going to the front desk of Guitar. Oh, nice. I accidentally walked into the factory, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to be completely covered Cover, with the air yeah. that and all that. Yeah. And I just walked in and I was just enveloped by the smell of chocolate. Nice. It was crazy. It's, it's like Willy Wonka. It was. It was like a warm chocolate cloud. It's like taking a bath in chocolate. Like almost. It, yeah. Almost. Almost. Less messy though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, so the caramel is getting really close here. You can see it's browning. You just want to get a little. I'm gonna get a little bit darker. You have a lovely phrase in your book where you say it should be the color of an old penny. Yes. I really like that. Yes. Very descriptive. Yeah, lovely. Do that. Well, now, so what would happen if it wasn't the color of an old penny, if you just did this? If you did it lighter like this, uh -huh. um, it'd be fine. It just would taste less caramel. Okay. So I like to bring it a little bit farther along. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you are not used to making caramel, you may want to stop at a lighter color, just because uh -huh. you don't want it to, you know. Yeah, to burn. To burn, which is, there's nothing worse than burnt chocolate. Or burnt caramel, or burnt caramel yeah. I'm sorry. So I'm going to... That's nice. I, that's yeah, like that's the color, color of a slightly old penny. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to stop here. Okay. And then I'm going to drizzle in can a little bit. Can you guys see this? Let me turn it so okay. you can see this color. There. Can you see that color right there? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle a little bit of cream into this. And when I do that, it's going to mm -hmm. steam up. Okay. So I'm going to drizzle just a little bit and it starts to sputter and steam. Mm, that and looks then good. I'm going to continue to do that. Facebook. This is Irvin Lim, the author of a great new cookbook called Marbled, Swirled, and Layered. And I'm Margot True, Sunset Magazine's food editor. And we're making lovely chocolate brownies with Cracker Jack topping. And we're coming close to the end of our Facebook of Live. Our Facebook yeah. Live. The piece de resistance is coming up here. Yeah, so good. So we're keep on doing this. Brilliant. It's getting all puffy. It's in getting there. all puffy and stuff. The okay. reason I drizzle this in is if I pour it all in at once, it'll start to seize and harden up. I see. Which is fine if you do that. It's just an, it's another step because then you have to cook it a little bit longer to try to melt all those pieces. Right, that melt. right, right. So that's why I do it like drizzling like that. Okay. So we've got that. And then I'm also going to throw in half a stick of butter. Okay. And then we are coming right up on the end. So okay. we will pretend. <laughs> That suddenly the universe has sped up into warp speed. Yes. <laughs> so once we're done with this, actually, uh -huh. um, we do have to cook it a little bit longer to get it oh. to um, two. Mm. No, on your, on your candy thermometer. On the candy. Oh, there's yeah. a candy thermometer right here. Right. We're gonna have to take it to a um, uh, the hardball hard, stage. Yeah, the hardball stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's like. Two sixty-ish. Two sixty-ish. Let's go. Well, let's it. it's let's pretend that that yes. has happened. Yes. And we'll pretend that it is at the hardball stage, and we'll pour it on here. Okay. And then put it all over here, and then we'll sort of see. We'll imagine. We'll imagine what it's like. We'll imagine. Okay. Just to get the idea. Yes. So we're gonna do that. Okay. I'm gonna. Oh, the first thing we do actually is I'm gonna pour a little bit onto the onto the oh, brownie right. itself, and this is gonna let it stick. 
just pour it a little bit like that. And if you want to go ahead and spread that out, I will drizzle this. You spread it all over the top of the brown. All over the brown, right? yeah. Maybe a little bit more, or a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. Great. So spreading it all over to create this lovely kind of shellacky topping of caramel. Thin crackly topping. Oh, that looks so great. And then we're going to go ahead. I've tossed. I poured the caramel in here and tossed it with brown with the popcorn. Okay. So now you just want to make sure it's all coated like this. Yes. And then we're going to immediately pour it onto the brownie. And speed is of the essence when you're working with caramel. Because right? once it starts to um, cool, it hardens. So you just want to do it as fast as possible. Okay. I mean, don't do it too fast. You don't want to burn yourself. Mm -hmm. You still have, you have a little bit of time. It's not that bad. Okay. And then you just sort of press it down press like it this. Down? Yeah, press All it down. All right. Oh, this is sort of like Rice Krispie treats, only more exciting. Only better. Oops. Mm. And oh. then you just let it cool and okay. to harden. Perfect. How long does it take to cool? Um, till it feels cool. So I would say like, <laughs> like <laughs> I would say 15, 20 minutes maybe, okay. a little longer. All right. However you're comfortable with, whatever you're comfortable with. Great. And then to get it out, how do you get it out? So what's great about this is I've got the pan here, I've got the paper here, and that's one of the reasons why I have this paper. You just pull it out like this using the edge of the paper. Oh my lord. And you can pull the whole thing out just like this. Unbelievable. And then here's your board. We won't cut it because they'll all fall off, right? Yes. Because it's too, yeah, you want to let it cool to harden. Yeah. But what you would do is, you, at this point, you could peel off the paper. Uh-huh. Um, oh, look at that. On the edges right there. Because you have so cleverly yes. made those free floating. Yeah, and then this you can actually, you probably could lift this up and uh -huh. kind of peel this off that way. And then okay. slice. And, and then you slice. Yeah. And what you get is this scrumptiousness. Yes. Oh my lord, so we must try this. We have napkins here because of course I'm planning ahead <laughs> for this final bite. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. This, this looks like quite a... Uh, <laughs> Quite a thing to eat. Oh. Mm. Mm. Really good. Oh my god. The Cracker Jack on top is great. Mm, this is I love the peanut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, the brownie is fantastic. Thank you. It is so chocolatey. Super intense. Like super, super intense. That's the double triple chocolate. Oh man. A little cup of espresso. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Oh. Absolutely. Thank you, Urban Lynn. Thank you so much for having me. Mm, you're Thank so you. welcome. Yeah. Author of Marble, Swirl, and Layer. You can make this at home and you can eat it at home and keep eating it and eating it and eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thanks, Facebook Live. Thank you. Thank you, Facebook.